Welcome to Violin Adventures number 98. We're getting so close to episode 100 and we want to make it special. So if you would like, please in the comments below, put any questions you might have or anything you're curious about in the comments below and I'll try to answer it maybe on that episode. Also, I could consider going live Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but I'm not sure about that. But if you would like that, put it in the comments below. And thank you to all the new subscribers. And one more thing I wanted to mention. I'm really sorry to any of you that are having to look through ads to see my videos. I don't put those on there and YouTube puts them on, and actually YouTube doesn't pay me until I get a thousand subscribers. So I just realized that there's ads on all my videos. So if you don't like the ads, I use Firefox, and there's a tab where you can get rid of all the ads and it's free. I don't know if that helps, but just a word there. I appreciate all of you real subscribers who are putting up with that. We're going to go on now to our special violin. Okay, I've got this violin set up, the one that came in the mail last week, and we're going to call it our fancy violin. I'm going to play it so we can hear what it sounds like and then decide what, it, what else it needs. So, chin rest that clamp down right in the center. You can still have the chin rest on the side but it clamps in the center rather than here. But I can tell that the person who owns this violin is doing a good job making sure that these aren't too tight. Um, so it's not a lot of old violins I've seen have been pressured so tight here that it bends the rib and just and basically distorts the violin. So the secret to help take better care of your violin, especially if it's an older one or a very expensive one. Okay, this is a real cute old sewing box, but they're great to hold all the parts and we may need room for a fingerboard, so put all these parts in here so they don't get lost or around. Okay, now is the time to take off the top. Now this top is very thin, so we have to be very careful. You know I'm going to go get that nice soft piece of leather rather than this cradle. Alright, I'm going to take my time going around here 
and it's too boring to watch, so I'll see you after I get it open. Plus, it's sometimes heart-wrenching to hear all the creaks and cracks that the violin makes. So we'll see you in a few moments. Okay, I know you all are wondering if the patient is okay. Yes, it is. After open heart surgery like that, you've got to be really careful. Um, this violin has been opened a few times, at least one time before. So when you see that, you have to be really careful when you're opening it again because it's so prone to crack wherever it had cracked earlier. So let's take the top off together. Okay, so we have quite a sound pulse patch here in the middle of the whole violin. And I'm just wondering about that, why it has gone so far across and how thick it is. <laughs> that could be a big factor right there. It might be the original base bar that's been placed over the patch. <laughs> so we definitely need a new base bar here. And it doesn't look like it has hardly any slant. Now one of you in the comment section asked why we put a slant in the base bar. And there's a few reasons. One of them is that when you put it with the grain of the top, then it's very prone to crack right along the base bar because you have all this vibration going along and it can't vibrate right there on the edge and so it tends to crack anyway. So. Uh, we put a, a little angle on it so it's going across a few of the grains. Also, that causes the grains of the wood, more of them, to vibrate more. So, Okay, here is our uh, top of this violin. And you can see how we've got a very small bass bar and uh, not the right angle. And then this patch, it just covers this whole section. So first things first, we're going to take the base bar off. Well, as I get this out, I see the, the grain is very wide on this uh, base bar. I see only three grains across. So the good thing is a better base bar, a better placement, all these things are going to help improve the tone. Okay, since this patch is a little thick, especially for here, I'm going to go ahead and, and take it out. Wow, that already sounds better after I've taken down the patch. Um, the patch is the grains are not matching and the grain is too wide on the patch, but we'll see how far we can go. Beware, there's a little rant coming. I'm going to start calling myself the mama bear of violins. When I see things that aren't done correctly, um, and, and then it it's not good when you have people out there who have not been trained I'm not saying this one hasn't, but uh, finding so many violins, and especially in the last place in California, there were so many people who weren't trained who sold themselves as violin repair people, and they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so if you need a repair done, please try to find a violin maker or someone who has been trained professionally not someone who's trained themselves and has all these theories that they put into place and they don't make proper repairs. Okay, done with my rant. Now what I see is this was a patch that was just placed on top of the top here. There was no fitting it 
or inlaying it properly. So, I've got to discern if it even needs a patch and why the patch was there. Now our YouTube violin. Hi everyone, I wanna just let you in on what's going on here in the shop. So here's our YouTube violin. And I have been setting this uh, sound post up and our YouTube violin didn't like where I put it. So I moved it and it still didn't like where I put it. So I'm gonna try putting it in while you guys are here and let's see what it sounds like. It's, it's sounding good, don't get me wrong, but I just like a certain sound. I like a, a really pleasant, smooth sound and a deep sound. And so we'll try this again. Where is that side? This thing turned on me. There it is. Back to our special violin. I've been looking this over. There was also a, a big indention here where the bridge was pushing down really badly on the top. So I've been looking it over and it seems that there's very tiny little hairline cracks up here which I need to address. And I'm considering putting in a little tiny patch on the back not this great big huge patch. Definitely this violin is going to have a different sound when we get done with it because that patch would have really affected the tone and also the bass bar. In time while I'm thinking about this I'm going to look at our old viola. Next we have an old viola here and tap it first. So it's got good wood in it, which I really like. Um, okay, it's got German graduations. Yes, definitely German graduations. So since this is one of my instruments and since it doesn't have, uh, it's probably just made in Germany in the probably early 1900s, I'm not sure, or late 1800s, just manufactured. I'm going to take the liberty of changing this to an Italian graduation. 
And so first things first, we're gonna take out this old base bar. Our special violin again. So looking at our our special violin here, um, I've just been looking at it, taking my time looking it over, and there seems to be here where the bridge was. There's an indention and a, a quite a sharp indention on this right side of the bridge foot. And then as I look closer, there's little tiny cracks. So what I want to do at this point. I tried some water um, therapy on it and it didn't, didn't do very much. So what I want to do now is glue these little hairline cracks so that they're supported and we'll probably have to let that dry for another day and then we'll start in on a little inlaid patch here just to support this because it seems to have weakened from that, from the indention of the bridge foot. And I'm not sure why that indented so badly on this side, unless the sound post was too tight or, anyway. From this, to this, to this, back to the viola. Okay, here's our beautiful viola. And I just wanna make note, you have an instrument that was handmade you don't want to just go re-graduate things. You want to, those are uh, instruments are works of art from an artist. And they graduate the way they see best in their instrument. So if you have an a instrument which has a label that was created by some person, we don't want to re-graduate their work. We want to leave it. That is their work. But if you have an instrument made from Germany or China and it has good wood, it has potential, and it isn't working for you, it's okay to re-graduate. But... So this shout out goes to Mike from Lodi Ironworks. And he noticed my little vise, which happens to be my favorite vise because of this base. It's an iron base and so it really is sturdy and strong and holds still when I'm using it. And he said to turn it over. See it says model 308 made in the USA and then right down here is a little L and that stands for their um, Lodi Ironworks in Lodi, California. And what makes this so special is someone gave this to me but Mike, that is his foundry of ironworks, and he, he ordered two violins from me. So a great shout out. I'm, I'm just thrilled to have one of his products in my shop. They supply parts for medical, automotive, military. Uh, it's amazing operation. Now I wish I would have visited to see it but you can find out more about this foundry that did this beautiful base that is very heavy um, in the description box below. It was called Lodi Ironworks. A special project. Excuses, but I've got this hourglass and from experience I've found that these don't last very long if they don't have protection. So, my plan is to make a base in a top and with this old, I've got four pieces. These were legs on a table. Maybe I'll use these for the corners and we'll see what we can make real quick. And all these little pieces of wood, I don't throw them out. I save them for our little miniatures.
Okay, here it is. I think it came out real nicely. Um, the story behind this is that in my old shop, I had a big, I think it was an hour, hourglass, and it was a big one, the biggest one I'd ever seen. And it was just like this one with no protection around it. And I should have known eventually it's gonna break. And someone had touched it and it broke to pieces. Well, ever since then, I've wondered if I could make a protective case around it. So this was trial just for fun. This is only a five minute um, timer, but it's a trial case. If I ever come across a big one again, I have a beautiful little piece of spruce that I used actually on the violin two violins back. Anyway, it has really nice close grain. And so I'm going to work on a little sound post patch here. There's no crack on the inside, but the top um, is a little bit weak. So I want to make sure that we have support here. So we're going to inlay this. Okay, while I'm thinking of it, we want to plan something special for the 100th episode. And one of you suggested, how about questions and answers? And that's a great idea. So if any of you have questions, send them in, put them in the comments below so that we have lots of questions for the 100th episode. Okay, I've been sitting here for the last hour or so, fitting our little, little patch here. And one thing I love to do is just make sure I keep fitting until I can get that chalk right in the middle. And then I know we've got full contact. Okay, it's time to glue up this little patch. Okay, here's our special violin, and we've got the sound post patch in there. There was no sound post crack on this side, but the top was weakened just a little bit with that bridge placement that may have been caused by a too um, tight sound post, but we're not for sure. Anyway, I strategically placed these all around that bridge area so that we don't have any extra pressure where it shouldn't be. So here we go. We're going to let this dry for 24 hours and tomorrow we can take it down, Lord willing. But I'm very happy with this progress and the relief of removing that huge patch that was in there, making this area so thick and putting in this, this small patch just to give it strength. I'll look outside. This is Thursday about 1.30. And we just had a bit having a... The river is rising. real quick and see what what kind of tone we have okay I'm very happy with the little patch so I'm sure you're dying to see it so I'll bring you over here there it is as you can see the original patch went around like this and made it all way too thick so we went down with a little patch just to make sure that this side of the violin has a support here we are the end of the week. This is Friday afternoon and we've had some real downpours. 
I woke up this morning and the creek was overflowing but it went back where it belonged so I'm thankful for that we should have some more rain this afternoon now back in here where it's nice and dry and I love to have a shop that has lots of projects going on so let's take a peek uh oh there you go that's that new violin and we haven't even touched it this week here at the work table we have our special violin and so we got some good work done on this violin and we'll be working on it some more next week over here is our viola and we got the graduations down it's sounding good here's our beautiful hourglass I think this is going to come in handy this year there it goes holding up real nicely and over here is our YouTube violin I'm letting it hang out down here rather than put it in the showroom because I want the varnish to have some more time drying and here we don't want to forget our vice the base on the vice from one of our customers in Lodi Lodi Ironworks the Hebrew Minute Elohim Ele Ata Ashaharecha Zama Ka Nafshi Kama Laka Basari Baaret Ziya Va Ayef Beli Mime. This says, O oh God, you are my God. I search earnestly for you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water or without water. If you know where this is found, leave it in the comments below. And if you'd like your ver favorite verse read in Hebrew, just leave it in the comments and I'll add you to the list. Thank you for sending in your favorite verses. Thank you so much for watching and for your wonderful comments. I enjoy talking to you and for your thumbs up. Thank you very much. And don't forget, put your questions below so that we can answer them on the 100th episode. Until next time, God bless you. Bye.